Really we the ones who gotta delegate Get that money and the power Never be fake Stick to co side for three What did he say? Uh, create jobs Support our own Educate the same and buy back your home Got three degrees Triple ten Three PhDs Now we on the CNN DBTV Let's talk about negligence Ignorance is bliss But we can turn into intelligence Believe none of what you hear Half of what you see Let's break it down here on Dr. Boyce TV Here we are Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome to the Black Financial Channel. That's theblackfinancialchannel.com. If you like daily financial news and commentary from a black perspective, make sure you subscribe to theblackfinancialchannel.com and also follow the Black Financial Channel on Instagram. So look up the Black Financial Channel on Instagram. Uh, we'll make you smarter every single day, and uh, the Black Business School is the backdrop of all of this. And I want to say hello to everybody. Um, I just got back from Atlanta. I went down to Atlanta. I got a chance to go see Jay Morrison's um, Black House, uh, which was uh, the Legacy Center. Uh, he built a nice... $2.1 million facility down there that is designed to educate black people uh, to allow us to achieve our goal of taking over media. It's right down the street from Tyler Perry Studios. So Tyler and Medea, y'all need to watch out because you're about to get some competition because we are doing big things in Atlanta, making big plans. Uh, we're not sitting around waiting and watching and reacting to what other people do. We are planning and building ourselves. So I saw uh, Jay Morrison gave me a tour of the Black House. Queen of Fua was there. How many of y'all know about Queen of Fua? If you know Queen of Fua, raise your hand, say something. Uh, very brilliant, brilliant uh, woman that was an extraordinary healer. Uh, I know Alicia was excited to meet Queen of Fua, and she was down there. A uh, brother from New Era Detroit was down there. Uh, we also went to see Rick Mathis, and he has a studio that he's building in downtown Atlanta, uh, along with a sister down there. And uh, we saw we saw that studio. And uh, what else did we do? Oh, we also hung out with Madam President, one of the great creatives of this country. So we got big plans. We got a lot of really great things that we're working on, and uh, you're going to be really excited about what you know what we roll out over the next uh, several months. So we're not just talking; we are actually doing. We're building. We're creating. We're making things happen. So with that said, let's move on. Um, I want to talk about Amazon stock. Uh, how many of you have thought about owning shares of? Amazon at any point. Uh, Amazon stock actually is the star stock of the day. Um, Amazon went up even further today. I think it's now trading over three thousand dollars a share. Uh, and you know, if you recall, there was a time you know where you could have bought Amazon for almost nothing. Let me see. Let me look at Amazon stocks. Amazon stock price uh, uh, in the past a few years ago. Let me see. Right now, Amazon. Am, right. Right now, Amazon's trading at three thousand eighteen dollars, and uh, let's see here. Five years ago, you could have bought Amazon stock for five hundred and thirty-six bucks. If you went back to two thousand and six, you could have bought Amazon for thirty-eight dollars. How many of y'all think that's crazy? You literally could have bought Amazon for thirty-eight dollars, and now it's trading for over three thousand dollars. So what? What would thirty? That's what a hundred times. Your, your money, that's amazing, right? Can you imagine buying, you know, $1,000 worth of Amazon stock back then is worth $100,000 now, or maybe buying $10,000 worth, and I guess that would be worth a million. Is that right? Did I do the math right? Yeah, anyway, anyway, Amazon is a great, great uh, company. It is well run. Jeff Bezos' wealth, his net worth has gone up by $57 billion this year. I mean, that's an extra $57 billion on top of the fact that he was already the richest man in the world. So literally this man, his wealth shot up during the pandemic. Um, I don't know how you feel about that politically. Some people think that wealthy people are evil and that it's a bad thing. And, uh, and I do agree that the wealth gap needs to be addressed at some point. But at the same time, you guys know I don't really try to tell you what your politics should be. I don't believe in telling people what to think. I do believe, though, however, as an advisor and kind of breaking it down and letting you know what it is. So I like to do the Dr. Boyce breakdown to kind of tell you what I'm seeing and what's kind of what's kind of happening there. Uh, his wife got jerked. <laughs> I think his wife walked away with 20 billion or something. I, I don't know if I would call that being jerked. I mean, I don't know. I, I, I'm not really going to count your money. But if you put 20 billion in my bank account. I'm going to wish you well and say thank you very much. But then again, though, maybe his wife deserved more. Who knows? Who knows? It is what it is. But uh, but here's the thing about Bezos before I dive into Amazon stock. And I want to say I saw somebody give a shout out from South Africa. Uh, I see you down there. So I love South Africa. I'm going to come down there and do an event. Uh, probably whenever the pandemic's over, I've talked to Noma Langa Mushali Moses. And I'm going to come down to South Africa at some point. Feel free to shout out your city also if you're watching. Um, here's here, here's some a couple quick thoughts about Bezos. You might want to keep in mind because, uh, as you know, 
uh, in the Black Business School, our goal is to convince parents to do what's necessary to manufacture millionaires in your family. I want you to you know, really understand that there is a, a millionaire manufacturing process, uh, a factory, if you will, uh, that you can design in your household that will manufacture millionaires. The same way, uh, I have a friend who was in a group called, uh, uh, what was that group? Uh, Arrested Development. Remember, uh, they had a song, Tennessee, 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 Tennessee. Well, anyway, Speech, that was his name. Yo, Lord, I really been real stressed, down and out, losing ground. But anyway, so Speech actually has a great documentary you should watch. It's called The, the N-Word Factory. I'm not going to say the word, but y'all know what the word is, right? I, I think it's too early to use that word. You should only use it after after dark. Uh, and uh, basically, the N-Word Factory breaks down how there's a process, a factory that produces certain types of black people, certain types of black men, certain mindsets, right? Well, the same way you have the N-Word Factory uh, that mass produces a certain mindset, the destructive genocidal mindset that we see that we're all very frustrated with, you also have a millionaire factory. Millionaire factories produce people who think about wealth in a certain way, who invest in themselves, who invest their time, who invest their money, who invest in education, who build for the future, right? And so you got to ask yourself, what are you producing? What are you producing in your household? Because mindset is everything when you talk about wealth. You give me two people that start off in the projects and they have two different mindsets, um, I can tell you right then who's, gonna, who's most likely to end up in a certain place. So the, the millionaire mindset that Bezos had, he wasn't born poor. He wasn't born poor. I don't think he was born super rich. I don't think he was born rich or anything. But he was, you know, he was a kid that was, you know, at an early age, he was deep in technology. His parents made sure he learned technology and business the same way a lot of our parents make sure our kids learn football, basketball, and Cardi B lyrics, right? So while your child is over here learning football, basketball, and Cardi B lyrics, uh, the millionaire's child is learning technology and business. And I'm kidding. I, I'm not talking about your kids. I'm talking, but you know what I'm talking about. Y'all know what it is. We are masters at nothingness. We are experts at everything that will keep you broke. We are very, very good at studying all the things that will never put a nickel in your pocket. 99.9% .9 of all basketball players never make a penny playing basketball. So why would you? So if you dedicate most of your time to something that's going to leave you broke, then why are you shocked when you're broke? You, you shouldn't be shocked because you got exactly what you aim for. You hit the bullseye right on the target so congratulations you have achieved your goal you didn't know it was your goal but that's your goal if you spend your time majoring in the minors mastering things that will not give you an economic benefit getting good at stuff that doesn't help you on any level long term in terms of building for your family then guess what you're going to get left out of the economic uh the economic wave of, of america bezos at an early age was heavy in technology if you look at Amazon, the reason Amazon took off and became the great company it was is largely because they mastered technology. They just he he went in and he went to a little I kid you not read, go read the story. He went into a, um, a a local bookstore where they did a little class, a little free class on how to be a, how to start your own bookstore. So he's sitting next to librarians and school teachers taking notes on how to start a bookstore. But guess what? He also was uh, really good at technology. So he said, wait a minute. Why am I going to go sell one book at a time when I can use the Internet, this new thing called the Internet, and sell thousands of books to people all over the country and have unlimited storage space? Right. So ultimately, that ability to use technology to scale is the, the driving force uh, in the wealth gap. That's a, a huge driver in why some people can make money, can make, you know, one hundred thousand dollars while they're sleeping. And there are other people who have to work, you know, five years to make that same amount of money. Uh, and, and so, so if you want to know what we're doing in our household, we have um, a 17-year-old who is really good at engineering, and just like a lot of our kids who are smart, you know, he, he's he's probably gonna get a scholarship, and he's gonna be, you know, he's gonna be, you know, an engineer and all that. And I said, okay, make sure you also learn business on top of your technology because that will give you the opportunity to do what Elon Musk is doing, you know, who's worth probably 20, 30 billion dollars himself. So when you pad that on top of each other, that's when you create millionaires and billionaires, right? Uh, a wealth building mindset with the ability to scale using technology, then boom, stuff takes off. That's how Supercent, the girl from, um, young lady from uh, New Orleans, I think, how she made a million dollars in 90 minutes. You can't work that hard enough to make a million dollars in 90 minutes. A computer can only do that for you, right? So so anyway, let me let me move on. Do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button. And also, um, don't forget, if you uh, actually are interested, uh, we are starting uh, an options trading masterclass 
on Wednesday. So if you're interested in using stock options to strengthen your investment strategies, uh, the masterclass starts Wednesday night. You can go to drboycemasterclass.com and talk to one of our specialists who can talk you through what the program offers. That's drboycemasterclass.com. So feel free to go check that out. Please hit the thumbs up button if you're watching online. All right. So the uh, the, the thing about Amazon. So, so what's going on with Amazon is that all the analysts are very bullish on Amazon. Um, Amazon Web Services is getting a little bit of competition from uh, the cloud business from Microsoft uh, in terms of getting these military contracts. Uh, you know, right now, a lot of experts are saying the analyst stock, excuse me, uh, my, uh, uh, Amazon stock is actually still pretty cheap. Uh, so I actually added more Amazon to my portfolio. I already had some Amazon, and I was smiling when I looked at, 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 at what the value has done. Uh, but I actually added more uh, today because uh, it looks like there's some upside, and people are actually predicting even higher levels. And so right now, you know, the, the two big sort of tech business chiefs uh, between Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos, both of those guys hit major highs this this past week, and I'm and one little point I'm one thing I'm going to point to, and I hope I can say this and still have you love me because I love you no matter what uh, no matter what you say uh, is is this look if you notice one similarity between Bezos and Musk, here's one similarity between Bezos and Musk. Maybe it's because you know we're all techie nerd anti-social type people. You know they're, they're both tech guys. I'm a tech guy. I'm a, my master's is in mathematical mathematics uh, with a special specialization in statistics and my PhD is in finance. So we're, you know, we're kind of, we're numbers people. We're, we're, in, we're, we're not so much people people. I became a people person because I talk to people all the time. So that strengthened that side of my personality, but really I'm not, I, I'm not a natural people, people person. Alicia is. And, and here's the thing. Sometimes when you're in that category of being the, you know, the, the techie introvert, it, who who analyzes numbers and data, you can say things that might make people think you're insensitive, or you can do things that might make people think, oh, you don't care about people. And I found it fascinating that when this pandemic hit, both Bezos and Musk, and me, actually, now that I think about it, took a lot of heat because we didn't get caught up in the wave of panic, Right. Everybody else kind of froze. They sat there and just froze like, oh, my God, we're all going to die. What are we going to do? Let's wait for Dr. Fauci to tell us that we can go to the bathroom. Let's wait for Dr. Fauci to tell us that we're allowed to go on the porch. Right. Oh, my God, I can't move. I can't fart. I can't do anything because I'm scared to death of what's going to happen. And remember Musk in the very beginning, he got in a lot of trouble because he tweeted that the panic over the pandemic is stupid. I thought that was kind of harsh, but that's what he said, right? And he kept he wanted to keep his factories open and he wanted to keep moving forward. And everybody's like, oh my God, all your workers are gonna die. I don't think that they did. I, I don't know if anybody got an infection. Probably they probably did, because the, the virus is kind of everywhere. But he kept moving and he hit his his manufacturing numbers and the the numbers were great. And and so now his wealth has increased by several billion dollars. Because he hit his numbers, Tesla stock is by is now being rated by analysts to even go higher than what it is. So I bought some more Tesla. Um, Bezos simultaneously also got heat for not sort of going along with the sheep, for not stopping what he was doing because out of fear, right? Bezos, you know, Amazon bought hand sanitizer and had masks for everybody and and disinfected all the factories and all that. But they were like, you know what? We're going to do America a favor by being the, the only game in town and continuing to operate despite the pandemic. Now, was that the most sensitive move in the world? No, it wasn't. But here's one thing I'm going to tell you. This is for the future millionaires in the room. This is just the reality. If you're a leader or a future millionaire, I'm just going to tell you like this. This is the honest to God truth. It is very hard to be a rich and powerful person and to also be seen as a good person at the same time. Like, it doesn't mean that some people aren't going to think you're good, right? You can be as good and as kind and as helpful as you can be. But the fact that you handle your business and don't freeze up and get distracted by nonsense, the fact that you don't sit back in fear like everybody else, the fact that you are moving to the mar marching to the beat of your own drummer is going to cause people to get mad at you, to dislike you. I got a lot of flack from people when I said, 
No, me and my kids, we, we, we're going down on a vacation. We're not going to sit around. I, I calculated the odds, and the odds are that if you're under 70 and don't have any of the three major comorbidities, heart disease, diabetes, or hypertension, you're probably going to be okay. So your odds of dying if you get infected, even if you get infected, are like less than 1%. So I said, you know what? Okay, I said, kids, you know what? There's a 1 in 200 chance. If we if we catch the virus, there's a 1 in 200 chance one of us is going to die. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Y'all about that life? They're like, yeah, let's go on vacation. And we went on vacation, right? And, and, and so, so, so here's the thing. I'm just, I'm, I'm saying that I'm not even really telling you what to do. I swear to God, I'm not telling you what, I don't do that. I'm just giving you a perspective to consider. There are some people People who tend to be really, really extremely successful just don't live in a ball, a ball of fear, right? They take precaution, you know, they take risk, but it's calculated risk. See, there's a difference between a risk taker who becomes a billionaire millionaire versus somebody who's just stupid, who takes stupid risks. Like, like a stupid risk is when you just go to the casino and you put all your money on the blackjack table, you, you know, you're going to lose it all. It's not a smart move. But calculated risk is where you say, okay, there's a virus out here. There's about a one in three. I did the math. Doo, doo, doo. There's a one in 300 chance I'm going to be infected. And then and then if I am infected, there's a one in 200 chance that I'm going to die. So overall, maybe there's a one in 3,000, a one in 2,000 chance that walking out this door and going to work is going to lead to death. Right. Am I ready to roll those dice? There was never a moment during the entire pandemic where I doubted my decision to move forward with my life. You know, the, I, at the beginning, I said to Alicia, I said, this ain't, this is not Ebola. <laughs> like, this is not Ebola. You know, and, and, and so, so it, it didn't, so we, we wore our masks, we social distance, we washed our hands, we wash our hands all the time. We do all those things, but everything else is pretty much business as usual. And, 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 and so I bring up Musk and Bezos because that's exactly how they operated during the pandemic. They didn't take the, the road of extreme, extreme caution they took the cautious road to say, let's keep moving, but let's, you know, let's wear a mask, social distance, hand sanitize, and, 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 and disinfect everything so that we can keep everybody as safe as possible. And just know that when you go to war, there's probably going to be a casualty, unfortunately, right? You know, and, 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 and it's not uncommon to think that way. Think about this. When soldiers go to battle... They, they, you know, there have been many cases where people go to battle where they say, okay, 40% of us are going to die. You know, during World War II, they, the, the whole air fleet would take off and they would be like, yeah, we all knew only about 60% of us were coming back. And, and they went out anyway because they had a purpose. They had a mission. They had a purpose-driven life that led them to say, our purpose is bigger than whatever price we're going to have to pay in order to make progress. Go back and if you study um, the Mormons, when the Mormons were being persecuted, kind of like black people, except in a different way, it was a different kind of persecution, uh, they were being persecuted. And Brigham Young, who was one of the great Mormons of all time, basically said, to hell with this crap. Let's go take a chance and build something of our own. Let's go do something that's ours so we can be free, so we can live and in and, and, and peace and, and, and build and, and, and own something. So they said, you know what, let's go out west because there's this place called the Great Salt Lake. And what he did was he, he didn't try to take everybody. He went and he said, I need 250 families, the bravest families in the collective that are willing to take this chance. And they all got in their little cover wagons and they knew that everybody wasn't going to make it to the mountaintop. They knew that about that. And this is what actually happened. They knew that about a third of them were going to die, which they did. But the two thirds that made it set up shop and they began building a city called Salt Lake City, Utah. And this was a, a, maybe 150, 200 years ago. And 200 years later, Salt Lake City is one of the wealthiest cities on the planet. And the reason that it's wealthy and the reason that it's prosperous is because there were people who went out into a world where they were dealing with a situation that was probably 10,000 times more deadly than the coronavirus. Imagine a virus that, you know, corona might kill one in every 2,000 people under the age of 70. But imagine a virus that kills, you know, one out of every three people. 
they faced a virus that called, you know, called <laughs> called going out to the Wild West. I mean, you're white. They, the Indians don't want you out there, right? They're going to kill you. The animals will kill you. The disease will kill you. You ain't got enough food. You don't know where you're going. Ain't nothing out there waiting. Ain't no jobs. Ain't no McDonald's on the road. None of that's there. None of the conveniences, none of the systematic conveniences that we, that we are accustomed to as black people, none of that's there. It's like you're just going out into the wilderness because you want to get away from your oppression and your desire, your purpose, your mission is so great that you're like, you know what? The price might be high, but I'm willing to go ahead and take that chance. And so, again, I'm not telling you how you should feel about any of this. I'm just sharing a perspective and I'm letting you also understand this is really a big part of the reason why Bezos and Musk are worth over $100 billion combined and most people are not. If you study their histories, and I've read both of their bios, both of their bios, each of these individuals took a risk that 99.9% .9 of you would not take. I guarantee you. In fact, Musk, had a, his wife, I, th I think, divorced him because he had $100 million that he earned from starting PayPal. And his desire to build a company that would propel him financially to eventually try to go to Mars, he spent 99 out of a hundred million of those dollars, he got down to his last million, which sounds kind of funny, right? When you say it, but but imagine you have a hundred million dollars, you spend ninety nine percent of that money trying to get your company off the ground, and finally he got the funding and financing that he needed, but ultimately he almost wiped himself out trying to get this company started. Now this man's sitting on top of everything. So don't ever make the mistake of thinking that really successful people got there by accident. Most people that get to live a life that others don't get to live are people who made a sacrifice that others are not willing to make they typically took a risk that others were not willing to take you know so so think about that in your own life and 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 if you are a person that has a passion that keeps you up at night that's drilled so deep in your soul you can't you can't get rid of it or that that makes other people think you're crazy when you even talk about the dream you have I just want to encourage you to hold on to that dream. And that dream is like your little baby. And that baby's going to live based on how much the parent loves that child. If you love the baby enough and you feed the baby enough, then that baby will grow. But if you abandon the baby or don't or just give up on the baby, then the baby's going to die. It's completely up to you. So pick your dream, feed it, don't let anybody distract you. And whatever the spirit guides you to do, I say do it, man. I'm a big fan of just, just listening to your spirit. Because, in fact, the reason I'm even talking to you right now is because <clears throat> I had things I wanted to do that not one single person on the planet understood what I was trying to do. Nobody thought it, it didn't make any sense. It seemed kind of crazy. It seemed stupid. I was getting advice all over the place. And I just went with my gut and stuck with it and remained consistent. And that's even how I ended up talking to you right now. OK, so anyway, I'm going to go, guys. I didn't mean to turn this into some kind of a sermon, but shit, what the hell, man? Why not? Maybe that's what I was supposed to do today. I told you I don't <laughs> I go with my gut. My gut told me that it was time to go ahead and do a little bit of preaching this morning. I ain't no preacher, but I was doing a little bit of preaching. I know, but I believe in you and I want to see you win. I want to see you successful. So whatever it is, man, just go do it. Even if you fail. Never let failure make you think you made the wrong decision. Michael Jordan took thousands of shots that did not go into the basket, but that does not mean it was a bad decision. It just means that it wasn't the right time for you. That wasn't the right situation for you. But if you look at any situation you go through, the best growth or the greatest growth you have is actually when you fail. So if you salvage the, the, the failure or if you salvage the setback for what it's worth, then you're going to find that that setback really positions you for your next great success. Because believe me, you're looking at a guy who fails all the time every day. And I love failing because I know that failure means I'm going to be smarter the next time. Nothing teaches you better than failure. I promise you that. All right, guys. So I'm going to go. Uh, I want to remind you guys. I don't know if you know this, but we actually have a social media platform called blagenough.com, which is uh, kind of like a Facebook for black people, except we don't censor you for being too black. So if you're black enough, feel free to join us at Black Enough. It's on a T-shirt because we trademark this word. This is a black owned term. And so uh, at the trademark office, it's actually patented and all that stuff. So uh, not patented, but you know what I mean. 
So feel free to go to blackenough.com if you'd like to follow us on the social media. And also, uh, the Black Financial Channel is theblackfinancialchannel.com. Please hit the thumbs up button if you're watching online. And also, if you want to join us in the uh, Stock Option Investing Masterclass on Wednesday night, 8 p.m., uh, go to drboycemasterclass.com. That's drboycemasterclass.com. I'm out of here, guys. I'm going to eat some lunch and take a nap. Have a good day. See you soon. Happy investing. Peace. Here we are, clan, the isms, cataclysm, great. Our people out here struggling, trying to make it in this state. Everybody out here doing it, but we the ones who late. Now, family, we the ones who gotta delegate. Get that money in the power, never be fake. Stick to co sign for three. What did he say? Uh, create jobs, support our own. Educate the same and buy back your home. Got three degrees, triple ten. Three PhDs, now we on the CNN. DBTV, let's talk about negligence. Ignorance is bliss, but we can turn into intelligence. Believe none of what you hear, half of what you see. Let's break it down here on Dr. Boy's TV.